Good morning to friends and partners all over the world. On behalf of Leaders Church International, we are welcome again to another uh, edition of Miracle Tuesday with Christ. You're welcome. Today, the theme of uh, the title of God's message to us is the curse that produces miracles. That's the theme of God's message to us today. The curse that produces miracles. And I'll be reading from the book of Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, reading the verse 12. Here in this passage, Christ tried to teach the disciples the principle of faith. How faith operates, the faith, faith that moves mountain, faith that produces miracles. And here Christ cares the fig tree, and the fig tree withered. Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, verse 12. Now the next day, or the next day after the tri uh, triumphant entry into the Jerusalem, when they had come out of uh, out from Bethany, he was hungry, and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For it was not the season for figs. For figs. In response, Jesus said to it, Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciple heard it. Verse 20. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots by virtue of the uh, words that Christ pronounced and declared upon the unfruitful uh, fig tree. And Peter remembering said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Christ placed a curse on the fig tree that was unfruitful. So this morning, as, we, uh, to, uh, as the Lord is giving us this message, <clears throat> titled, The Curse That Produce Miracles. Every unfruitful thing in our lives, they shall be cursed to the roots, so the glory of God will be showcased in every area of your life. So Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For as surely I say to you, whosoever says to this mountain, Be removed. And be cast into the sea, and does not believe in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatsoever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. Hallelujah. So, with Socrates, he made a declaration, he pronounced a curse. On the fig tree. And the following morning, when they pass through, we pass by the fig tree that's withered from the roots. And as I've said this morning, every signatory disease that's trying to kill you gradually, we, they will cause, we're going to place a curse upon them to the roots. They wither off like the fig tree in the name of Jesus. There's always you know, the power of evil spirit behind the the you no know, debilitating diseases and incurables. Hallelujah. But the key to the curse that produces miracles is uh, uh, you no know, rooted and grounded in verse 22. Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. So the curse that produces miracles works for those who have faith in God. People have faith in different things. People worship idols. They worship you know, the works of men. Things, you know, animals, all kinds of things. People worship all kinds of things in the world. They have faith in those uh, idols. And, uh, you know, so, but we have faith in God. We have to have faith in God. 
And there's only one mediator between God and man, the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith in Christ. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ means faith in God. So God is challenging us to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ so that we will be able to make declarations be able to place a chaos upon everything that is not to the glory of God in our lives. And we see them disappear and miracles will show up. Miracle will happen. Hallelujah. As we go further in this uh, teaching this morning, we have a full picture of what the Lord desires from us. And as we start to pray, we see miracles to the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you to God. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, what we are saying is not new. What we've seen in the book of uh, Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. You know, it happened during the time of David. 1 Samuel, chapter 17. 1 Samuel, chapter 17. 1 Samuel 17. David was, uh, the children of God, the people of God were confronted by the Philistines. And the champion of the Philistines uh, and stood Goliath, the giant. And he was intimidating, intimidated the people of God for, for many weeks. And they could not move forward. They took over the land that God has allotted to his own people. You know, to, this morning, you will possess your possession in the name of Jesus. So that land God has given to the people of God, the children of Israel. God is the owner of the whole universe. The earth is the Lord and the fullness of the world and they that dwell therein. There's always an allotment for every individual to prosper and to thrive here on earth. But the devil is the one that encroaches over our destiny, over that which belongs to us. That which God has freely given to you. He's a thief. He has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Christ came that to have, so that we can have life more abundantly. John 10, 10. Hallelujah. So the devil is the one is a thief. He wants to steal people's joy. He wants to steal your peace. Steal your health. These are possessions that God has given to you. Things that God wants to enjoy freely. Your comfort. Your prosperity. And that what that will happen. They occupy. The enemy occupy the territory. That belongs to God's people. Every enemy that is occupying your own territory, that God has given unto you sphere of influence for you to achieve your purpose. Hallelujah! They will be evicted this morning. Now those enemies will perish in the name of Jesus. But they will rise not against flesh and blood, but against principles and powers, rulers of darkness of this world, and wicked spirits in heavenly places. Wicked spirits. They are beyond all, all form of wickedness, afflictions, oppressions, you know, sickness and disease. So we're coming against those wicked spirits. We're going to cause their works to be destroyed. We're going to place a curse upon such evil spirits. Hallelujah. They will perish. When we say they perish, that means you see them no more. You don't see them no more. When something perish, you seek them, you don't find them again. By virtue of that curse. Chaos is a word of judgment no, that is placed on the uh, enemy. And the word of judgment because the devil has been judged. Hallelujah. He has been defeated because he crucified Christ. Through the blood, the, through the sacrifice, the death and resurrection of Christ, the devil has been cursed. Hallelujah. And all his works cursed and destroyed. So that's why we are here to execute that judgment. You know, curses are by spoken words. We are here this morning to execute the judgment that has been accomplished concerning the forces of wickedness. Hallelujah. So that's it. So we can see here in uh, uh, the battle between David and Goliath, verse 43 of 1 Samuel 17, the curse that produces miracles. Verse 43. So the Philistines said to David, Am I a, a dog that you come to me with sticks? 
and the Philistine kills David by his guards. Hallelujah. The enemy, they understand curses, witches and wizards, sorcerers, occultic people. They you know, destroy people's lives because they play with the devil. They allow the enemy to use them. And they wreck havoc. So they speak negative words into people's life. And these world words are backed up by evil spirits operating through these uh, wicked people. Wicked agents of darkness. Hallelujah. And this morning we don't, uh, we don't desire the destruction of witches and sorcerers. We want them to change and come to the saving knowledge of Christ. But if they are stubborn and they are playing us to the devil, you know, when the curse is placed upon those evil spirits and the works of darkness, and if they don't let go and they play, continue to play us to the enemy, they will suffer the consequences. And that paraventure that might make them to change their mind and say, you know what, Satan, I have nothing to do with you again. I will embrace Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what we say this morning. So, there's no two way about it. The enemy must give way. In the name of Jesus. As Goliath gave way. Hallelujah. Taken out. The evil spirits and force of darkness and, we, and work of wickedness will be taken out of the, So you can have your peace. You can enjoy your life. You can enjoy the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 43, 1 Samuel 17. So the Philistines said to David, am I a dog? That you come to me with sticks, and the Philistine cursed them by his guards. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me. Those are the warnings of those cares. Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Hallelujah. When he released the word against the David, they are backed up by evil spirit. It's to make David lose his mind. Hallelujah. Somebody can run mad. No, some people suffer mental illness because of the words that are pro, no, pronounced upon them. And those evil, when words, cases are produced, are, are, are pronounced by the enemy, by the wicked people, it carries evil spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When we release words as God's people, when you have faith in God and you release the word of curse against the wicked uh, walk of darkness the spirit of the Lord will be at work hallelujah to destroy the work of wickedness hallelujah so that's what the Philistine says the expectation of the Philistines is that uh, he will destroy David had he become no food for the beasts uh, no, and the, the boss of the air and the beast in the field and verse 45 we can see the answer the reply of David against the Goliath, the Philistine. Every Goliath confronting your life this morning, as you release the curse that produces miracles, you seek them no more in the name of Jesus. You'll be able to make progress in life. You'll be able to possess your possession, sound health, prosperity. The Bible says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as I so prosperous. Verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Hallelujah. So David understand, understood the dynamics of that battle. That that battle is not, a, it's not against uh, David, but against the Almighty God. It will be foolishness for anyone to start to fight the Almighty God. Because the people of God, the Israelite belongs to God. And they, you know, David understood that and he stood his ground. Glory to God. So the same thing also, you have to say, have faith in God. Have you, do you have faith in God? Are you born again? Faith in Christ will make you to be born again. When you become born again, your God takes over your battle. John chapter 1 verse 12. Said to all that receive him. To all that receive Christ. To them he gave the power to become the sons of God. Even those who believe in his name. You cannot see Jesus physically. No one can see him now. But he was here physically. You know. Before he, uh, you know, he came to pay the price. For our sins. 
to come, came to pay the ransom for our redemption. But when he left, he left out the legacy, the, the authority to become children of God, the power of sonship through the, his name, faith in that name will not deliver you from the path of darkness, sin, and Satan. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There is only one name that can save humankind from sin and darkness. The name Jesus. The Bible says there is no any other name given under heaven, give, you know, given amongst men, under heaven, given amongst men, whereby we should be saved. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. There is only one name, the name of Jesus, the name above every other name. And that name, every name was about things in heaven and earth and underneath the earth. Glory to God. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. So that's what David understood. Verse 46. said, This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands. The Lord will deliver all the wicked into your hands. And I will strike you and take your head from you. He started making declarations. The word of faith. Children of God, we speak the word of faith. To counter the curses. We don't curse. Hallelujah. Our own, you know, our own are positive words. That will get positive results. That will bring you peace. Comfort. And destroy the works of the wicked. To the enemy is a curse upon them. Throughout their positive words. In alignment with the will of God. Any word that is not in alignment with the word of God. Becomes a negative word. Hallelujah. And we cannot receive the backing of God. But we have God's backing. Because our, what we speak is in alignment with the will of God. So this day, the Lord will deliver into my hands and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses. The carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth. That all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. So, what David is there to make sure that God is glorified. It's all about God taking the glory. That they might know that we serve a living God. Miracles are happening in your life today because the unbelievers, they will know that you are serving a living God. Their eyes will be open, eyes of understanding, so they can also embrace Christ. But so without signs and wonders, you will not believe. There are people within the sphere of your influence that need to see these miracles that only God can do. Hallelujah. There's nothing to ask for God to do. They need to see those miracles. To know that Jesus Christ is in yesterday, today, and forever. That's the essence of Miracle Tuesday with Christ. Hallelujah. Verse 47. Then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spears. But said, the weapon of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds, every uh, impediment to breakthrough in your life, every bulwark of the enemy, every stronghold of the enemy, they, they crumble. We place a curse upon them, they crumble and destroy like Goliath for your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. He said, For the battle is the Lord's, and He will give you into our hands. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it was. It, so it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David that David hurried and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. Boldness was not afraid. He ran. Amen. You don't run away from troubles. Those troubles are stepping stone to miracles. Hallelujah. We carry God on the inside. God is on our side. We have the backing of God. The battle is the Lord. Why don't you give your life to Christ this day? Life is full of challenges and battles. So that your battle will be yielded to the Lord. Hallelujah. You start to fight your battles. So David believed in the living God. Have faith in God. So this, he knew that obstacle, that obstacle is going to be removed. Uh, every obstacle confronting you, I have that confidence that they will be removed. You see them no more. All the challenges will disappear. Because we serve a living God. So he rushed towards him. The Bible says the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing. And the gates of hell shall never, not prevail. When he got to the Red Sea, the Moses started asking from God, he believed in God, he said, what shall we do at this Red Sea? After he had you know, given confidence, he has uh, kind of, you uh, know, uh, 
they spoken to the uh, the, 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 the uh, no, each, uh, children of Israel. He said, hold your peace and see the salvation of the Lord. Mm -hmm. This is situation, see them no more forever. He knew that God is going to fight their battle. No matter how seemingly impossible, no, it seemed at that time. So, no. And uh, what did he say? When he spoke to God, God said, tell the children of Israel to go forward. <laughs> you, don't buy, you don't back up. No, you don't uh, give up. Go forward. In the face of overwhelming challenges of life, God will make a way where there seems to be a way and the Lord parted the Red Sea. And the enemy perished at the Red Sea. Every enemy contending with your soul and destiny. You see them no more this morning. In the name of Jesus. That word is a positive word of faith. But it's a curse upon the enemy. The, you know, and the angels of God are released. To execute that word of judgment. Because Christ said the prince of Israel have been judged. He that, told, he that, believes, in, uh, he that believes in Christ overcomes the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Faith in God. Hallelujah. Verse 49. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and he slung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth so David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and, str and struck the Philistine and killed him but there was no sword in the hand of David therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine took his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the book of Hebrews 11, the catalog of the heroes of faith said, True faith they put to flight the armies of the alien. Amen. Everything that is alien to God, everything that is not on the lost side, fighting you. Amen. We are in the light. We are the light of the world. Everything of darkness, they are alien to God. Armies of the alien, armies of the forces of darkness, mm -hmm. they will be put to flight because every stronghold will be destroyed, every Goliath will be destroyed. Mm -hmm. The Lord fights your battle mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's why Luke 11 he said, Have faith in God. Mm -hmm. That victory was cursed. Mm -hmm. Every unfruitful thing in your life will be cursed. Everything walking contrary to your peace, your joy, your health, hallelujah, your rest. They are cursed this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus. Christ paid the price. That's why I say have faith in God. Have faith in the finished work of redemption. That's what it means. And uh, that takes out the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Hallelujah. You know, Bible says, uh, Christ became a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is he that hang on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come unto the Gentiles in Christ. That they might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So Christ became a curse. Christ was died through crucifixion on the cross. And the meaning of that crucifixion is that it's meant for our cursed people. People that are cursed. So Christ took our place. And that's why the blessing of Abraham. God told Abraham, he that bless you shall be blessed. He that curses you, you know, shall be cursed. That means where you have Jesus Christ, you are blessed. Beyond any curse, the Philistine, Goliath, cursed David. But that curse didn't work. But the word of faith through David prevailed. Hallelujah. We speak the word of faith. That word of faith is a curse to the enemy. Because it's a judgment. The enemies are judged. Hallelujah. Glory God. Sicknesses are judged. By strife we are made whole. Christ has borne our griefs and our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. <laughs> By strife we are made whole. He paid the price. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. Christ suffered affliction. So I will not go through all this unnecessary pain. Hallelujah. We stand in our ground. In the name of Jesus, we curse every sickness. We curse every uh, uh, incurable disease. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we command your health to be buoyant. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. So that's what we're saying here. And that's why Christ was to, trying to teach the disciples in Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, which is our text for this message, the curse 
that produces uh, miracles. Verse 12 there. So Jesus cares the fig tree. Because the fig tree was unfruitful. It was not serving the purpose. There's a purpose for the fig tree. To add value. So that people can eat. No. no. But at that time there was no fruit. Though it was not the season. Anyway, but Christ wanted to teach them that this one is unfruitful. And I'm hungry. I need to know the fig to eat. But there's no fruit in this one. Hallelujah. Everything unfruitful in your life, they are cursed in the name of Jesus. They are removed in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Everything representing the fig tree that is unfruitful in our lives. Sickness and diseases. You know, you, uh, weak, work of wickedness. They are cursed. They are destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let's start to pray. Father, we thank you again. We worship you, God. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. The Bible says, uh, whosoever shall speak to this mountain, be thou removed. I'm not casting the sea. I shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that what he says shall come to pass. He shall have what he says. We believe that you are loosed from that infirmity in the name of Jesus. The power behind that infirmity in your life, they are cursed in the name of Jesus. We curse them by the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. We curse sickness and disease to die in your life in the name of Jesus. There is a life behind that sickness and disease. Those are the forces of darkness. That's the, those are the work of the spirit of infirmity. We cast that spirit of infirmity to die in your life. As you are hearing me under the sound of my voice, I cast in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ every work of infirmity and the spirit of infirmity in your life. The widow of, you see them no more in the name of Jesus. They are parasites. They want to destroy you. Hallelujah. Just like a parasitic plant that will not allow the, or the, the replant to enjoy the nutrients from the from the ground from the soil bible says jesus is the root of jesse is the root of jesse hallelujah mm. we are rooted and grounded in christ we draw nutrients from christ we are the oaks of bible says we are the oaks of righteousness mm. the planting of the lord that he might be glorified isaiah 61 children of god are the oaks of righteousness mm. the planting of the lord that he might be glorified we take roots downwards we bear fruit upwards mm. but when parasite comes mm. they want to share you know, you will not, you not be able to have their life in abundance. Hallelujah. Because there is a parasite. Hallelujah. We cast every parasite in your life. I cast every parasite in your life, in your family, in your marriage. They are cast in the name of Jesus. The other power is destroyed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every stronghold, every opposition, every hindrance to life in abundance. They are cursed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. We don't curse people. Mm. Hallelujah. But we place curse upon works of wickedness. Mm. Bringing the judgment of God upon them. Mm. Because their judgment has been accomplished through the death and resurrection of Jesus. Mm. They cannot operate in your life. Mm. You are a child of God. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. In righteousness you are established. You are far from oppression. Every work of oppression and affliction. Mm. We, bring, we, we terminate them. Mm. They are terminated in the name of Jesus. They are terminated in the name of Jesus. And every curse that the enemy has placed over your life, they will never walk. You are blessed beyond any curse. And you born again, you are blessed beyond any curse. But it says, speak the word that it cannot stand. The word of God did not stand. But the word of faith of David stood. Hallelujah. We are speaking the word of faith. It shall not return back unto us void. So who shall not speak to this mountain? Be thou removed. I'm not casting the sea. I shall not doubt in his heart. But I believe that what he says shall come to pass. He shall have what he says. We move every mountain out of your life in the name of Jesus. You, jo you enjoy life in abundance in Christ. Mm. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm. Oh, Marume Sukam Bragadaya. Mero to Kushinda Labake Rebene Kusopora Gandiaba. Let every mountain of troubles and problems be removed now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Mm. The world will not return back unto us void. Mm. Because we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. We believe in that word that is released. Mm. Hallelujah against those troubles. Because they are in alignment with the word of God. We have God's backing. David had the backing of God and he spoke the word against the Philistine and God confirmed the word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Moses spoke the word. He said this Egyptian situation, I see that no more forever. And God confirmed the word. Hallelujah. And they looked back, they couldn't see the Egyptians any longer. You see them no more. The troubles, you see them no more. They are cursed. That sickness cursed. That disease cursed. You see that disease and sickness no more in the name of the Lord Jesus. You are buoyant in health. Just believe God. Hallelujah. Have faith in God. 
Believe God with me this morning. Whosoever shall speak to this man, then be thou removed. I mean, that cousin that says, I shall not doubt, shall not doubt in his heart. Don't second guess God. Give him praise this morning. Father, we thank you. We worship you. Ah, uh, miracle walking God. Covenant keeping God. We thank you. We appreciate you for the miracles that has happened on this prayer, uh, no, uh, in this uh, prayer section in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this miracle Tuesday with Christ. We say hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. Glory to God. Every open door, every long shut doors of the enemy. Every door that the enemy has shut, doors of breakthrough and opportunity are open unto you in the name of Jesus. And every door that the enemy has opened to wreak havoc and to unleash evil, we say they are shut forever in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. If you are here under the sound of my voice, I've not given your life to Christ, say, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. I come unto you, the Savior of the world. Have mercy upon me, forgive me my sins. Say, Father, have mercy upon me, forgive my sins. In the name of Jesus, I come to you. Save me, wash me clean in the blood of Christ. Lord Jesus, wash me clean in your blood. Write my name in the book of life. Save my life. I receive the power to go and sin no more. The power of sonship. I receive eternal life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Father, we pray for a divine encounter for these individuals that are giving their lives to Christ under the sound of my voice. Lord, I pray that, Lord, they receive a divine encounter to the saving of their soul. That they will know you, Lord, uh, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou send, that they might be saved in the name of Jesus. Give them the power to go and sin no more. Give them, O oh God, that assurance that they are children of God. Give, thank you, Father. I will rebuke the devil in their lives. We say the devil touch them no more. For because of the blood of Christ upon them now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank God for the miracles today. We thank God for confirming his word. Looking forward to seeing you again next Tuesday, same time. Miracle Tuesday with Christ. And on behalf of Leaders Church International, we say remain blessed. Testimony shall abound to the glory of Christ. In Jesus' name, God bless you all.